Welcome everyone. Thank you for this last session before the weekend. So um, the metaverse of sustainable innovation. That's a, a kind of buzzword, uh, this uh, metaverse. Everybody is talking about it. As you know, it's a very old word. Uh, it came with uh, Neil Stephenson, the novelist, science fiction. Uh, more recently with the Steven Spielberg movie, Ready Player One. And uh, as you know, uh, many attempts has been done on the topic. And by the way, one of the first was in France with Canal+, Plus, Le Deuxième Monde. One of the first virtual world in, in 3D where you could walk around Paris. Extended to Second Life. Maybe some of you have been there. <laughs> I was there at that time. And uh, many uh, players in the game industry creating their, their, their world. Uh, on, on more recently, from EVE Online, World of Warcraft, Fortnite, obviously, Minecraft, Roblox. So this announcement is uh, making it, you know, more, you know, um, uh, broader uh, on, on, on the value. Is uh, what is the main characteristic of, of those words? Is it's a virtual world, so it's a special environment in 3D usually where you can uh, walk through, either through an avatar or, or on, you could discuss on, uh, on chat. Uh, and you can also create your word. And this is the commonality of those uh, uh, spaces. And at Dassault Systems, we are in the virtual world since 40 years. And we are celebrating our 40th anniversary this year, whereby our users can create their own virtual twin of their projects. So we are well known uh, for uh, many industries. We cover 11 industries in 140 countries. Aerospace, so 100% of the planes you enter in are completely digitalized in 3D. Uh, on our platforms, automotive industry from uh, Renault, Toyota, or Tesla, our big uh, clients. But almost everything around you, you know, your table launchers from IKEA or your bottle of shampoo on the, under the shower. Everything has been digitalized in 3D for designing, engineering, simulating, and production. And at the edge of the cloud, all those words can now connect. The value of the cloud is you give an easy access to those virtual worlds, and you can connect your communities to create a set of universes. So obviously, in our world at Dassault System, most of those universes are secret because we are talking of the car of the future or the product of the future. So the IP is highly protected and most of us are not uh, able to look at it. But now more and more open projects are coming up, up to a very uh, 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 open cloud project, such, you know, making your uh, home in 3D, like home by me, you just uh, go online home by me, you can create your, uh, your apartment, your home in 3D on the cloud and everyone could, uh, could have a look. Uh, and for instance, IKEA is, is, is using it. Uh, so now if you're building your kitchen on IKEA, on every country of the world, uh, we are behind this. So this is uh, our metaverse in a way uh, at Dassault Systems to allow our users to build their own uh, universes. Let's see in a in a, in a video, what uh, does it mean?
So at Dassault System, we have a real purpose, providing 3D universe to harmonize product, life, and nature. And with the 3D Experience Lab initiative, the open laboratory of Dassault Systems, that nurture and accelerate disruptive innovations that bring impact to the society since five years, we are building the virtual world of sustainable innovation. And as you can see through uh, David's eyes, by the way, David is our expert in uh, virtual reality at the, at the lab, uh, and we'll see a live, and we will walk through all those innovations in virtual reality in, in front of, uh, in, of me. And to go and to uh, navigate and to get the stories of few amazing startups we are accelerating, I'm welcoming Geraldine on stage. Geraldine is uh, at the 3D Experience Lab in charge of marketing communication. And Geraldine will interview uh, some of our projects today for you. Welcome, Thank Geraldine. You. Thank you, Frédéric. Hi, everyone. So have you understood the 3D Experience Lab is an open innovation laboratory that positively impacts people and society. So we select the best project, deep tech project at early stage, and they work with us during around two to five years. So now it's time to discover a few projects. So we have selected four, st four startups that will pitch in front of you their solutions. So the first one is a startup coming from Norway. I invite on stage Katarina Frostad from Clean Sea Solutions. Katarina, are you here? <laughs> She's coming from Norway, so. <laughs> Hi, Katarina, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Hi. <laughs> So, Katarina, uh, you are founders of Clean Sea Solutions. It's an amazing project. So, you are an entrepreneur, but you are also passionate about nature, passionate about environment and about ocean. So, I would like to have more detail about this passion that drives all your life. Yeah, I, so especially after starting with sailing, I found out that ocean is the big passion and suddenly it's a part of my life, it's part of my work and uh, everything. Uh, so I work a lot with sailing and expeditions and work with scientists on the field in the ocean and that's why starting like how can we save the ocean by using technology. That was the beginning of this journey with the Clean Sea Solutions. So now as you are a sailor and explorer, mm -hmm. how did you become <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> That's a, a fascinating thing by uh, entrepreneurship is like you can take your idea into uh, how can we, uh, how can I be a part of make a solution? How can I make a business is something I'm passionate uh, about and also put together. I don't have a technical uh, engineering background, but still I can be a part of making a business where we use technology to save the ocean. So that's one of the reasons I love entrepreneurship and also you see how you work when you work with something you're passionate about. You have another workflow, uh, extra energy. And yeah. <laughs> cool, thank you. Um, but uh, your solution is to collect plastic from the ocean, is it correct? Yeah, correct. Can you, can you please share exactly what is this deep tech project? Uh, our project is like, uh, I'm from Norway, we are quite big in offshore and maritime technology. So like, how can we use that technology to also do something good? So that's it's the basic for uh, the two solutions, at least that we have now. Uh, so we have one jetty uh, that is, uh, we work with uh, industrial drones, uh, but I think the ones that we're gonna show today is our cleaning, uh, cleaning drone. So we have been working with uh, people that are the best in autonomous solutions. Uh, so how can we use that technology in to make uh, one that take up uh, plastic? We see here on, th on the big screen what David uh, is uh, sharing. So it's your digital mock-up, so the digital twin of your drone. So it's something very complex. So I suppose you have a team, an engineer team behind this project. So can you please give us some details about the technical stuff? 
Yeah, so uh, this uh, cleaning drone we're seeing here, we're working together with uh, Maritime Robotics. It's a Norwegian company up in uh, Trondheim that are quite big in uh, autonomous uh, boats and also in, uh, in the air. So we've actually been uh, taking the drones and making it to be a plastic cleaner. So it works a little bit like a vacuum cleaner robots or the ones you have in your garden, but this is for the sea surface. Uh, so it uh, has a uh, capacity for 20 hours going out there. It goes self-empty itself, and they it, then it goes out again. So it have, for the moment, it has waypoints where they are following uh, in the harbors, but it also have all the technical to be uh, fully autonomous. Uh, you can also put in all kind of sensors. For example, it has a sensor that it can also map the seabed down to 150 meters uh, that you can put it on. But uh, like you can see, it's not so big. And the reason for that is because uh, Oslo Harbor, that was the first that going into the prototype with this, wanted to have a small one where the big boats was not able to come in. So this is made for harbors. We are mainly working with uh, harbors because we want to stop the plastic before it reaches the big oceans. Okay, cool. Um, and um, this project have been selected now um, four months ago. And uh, so you joined the program, the 3D Experience Lab program, to develop this technology. So we provide you all the different engineering applications for design, simulation, and manufacturing. So it's a sort of begin of the, you begin your journey at the 3D Experience Lab, and you will stay two or five years. It depends on uh, your development. So it's a, it's a very, uh, very interesting project. Um, so now, uh, at what, uh, what stage, what are your next steps in your project? So you are in Oslo, uh, have you launched maybe a proof of concept? Where are you exactly? Yeah, we have finally had a really exciting uh, year this year because we finally got the prototype on the water and start uh, develop it and test it. Uh, so now we are uh, trying to develop it from the testing we had this, uh, this summer. And our goal, even though we are in Norway, we want to go out to the market, in especially here in the south of Europe, and also go globally. Uh, and uh, that's also the good uh, thing why we can test it with uh, you guys and with your solutions and be a part of that, because we see that different countries have uh, different uh, difficulties uh, that we need to develop on the uh, solutions. So I think uh, this uh, drone can be used in different uh, countries and in Europe, in France, maybe? Yeah, our plan is to have it in all the harbors uh, around the world. Uh, that we will take uh, the same care of the ocean in front of us that we do with our own garden, is uh, what we hope for. Cool, thank yeah. you. So it means that uh, maybe this project, you will see it sooner uh, in different coasts, in Europe, but maybe in America or in Asia. So long life to this project. Thank you, Katarina. Thank you. <laughs> so this project, as you, as you have seen, uh, it's a project relative to the sustainable goal number 14, uh, life underwater. But we have also other projects. And the second project I would like to share you, it's another drone, but it's not exactly the same drone. It's a drone who is flying. So uh, now I uh, propose to welcome on stage Benjamin David, the founder and the CEO of Ixon. Hi, Hello. Benjamin. Hello. Hi, Geraldine. How are you? Fine, fine. Thank you. Good. Thank you. So um, before becoming an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you were part of a big company. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what has sparked for you? What is the beginning of this story? Yes, so yes, uh, before, before creating Exxon, basically I was working for Airbus uh, Defense and Space for more than uh, 11 years and basically achieving the first dream for me, which was to work in the space field in a yeah, in satellite, satellite industry. And uh, I mean, this is where everything started basically, where um, the, uh, the idea started where the, the origin of the project was very simple, basically, was to take my experience in aerospace and to create something which uh, is designed or think uh, that will have a life like a satellite using solar energy, using also batteries, and trying to maximize the, the autonomy, the endurance, and to have something highly uh, complex 
but also remotely controlled. And uh, the idea was maybe also to bring something back to Earth, not being in space anymore. And so this is how we, we've created um, Exxon. So X for innovation and Sun for uh, sustainability. Thank you, thank you. But um, I think uh, many people here in the room have seen many drones. So what is your key differentiator uh, in this market? Yeah, yeah. so basically we, we call it a drone because there is no uh, pilot. But the way I, I, I prefer to, to talk about um, what we do is that imagine, imagine an aircraft. Imagine the aircraft, make it fully electric. Make it fully electric and also make it solar. And also fully electric, solar, and unmanned control from, from the ground. This is it. This is Solar X1. So this is what you see here on video. And it's got one unique innovation, which is already a patent, which is in 20 countries in across Europe and USA. Uh, second is coming of a double of four wings, basically. This, have, this has key advantage. Basically, the first one is that it decreased the necessary uh, mass um, for the structure to about 25%. And this is huge for the payload. And so you've got a huge area for solar array. So you can extend basically the battery life up to 300%. Okay? So we've, we've achieved already so far a flight of 12 hours. So it means that it's a game changer. We unlock the autonomy problem. And uh, because of my background in aerospace and military also, uh, we try to make it also um, to the highest level of certification to, be, to achieve uh, what is the second locker, which is the certification level. So we were the first, for example, to achieve a flight uh, under non-segregated airspace. So we did not have basically to close the airspace to fly under beyond visual line of sight above populated areas. So now we also achieve certifications cross border, for example, accredited in France to do missions in Germany. And uh, so this is a, a key advantage. The, one of the, because you know, I could spend one hour with you, uh, but that's yeah, not the objective. Yeah, of one of the key things I just would like to, to underline is that uh, this configuration with four wings is very tricky to achieve. And um, this the is why... Aer the aerodynamism yeah. was very uh, complex. Ex exactly. The aerodynamic was quite complex. So we've been working with Dassault Systems. We've achieved, and also the mentors around the world, we've achieved s something quite unique. And mm -hmm. uh, now the flight is highly stable. You've got this natural stability which is very good for takeoff, for cruise, and also for landing. And when you take photos, it's very important to have very, very stabilized things, systems. Otherwise, what you have to do, for example, for aircraft or helicopters, is that you have to add a very expensive stabilizer. Mm. The stabilizer is the aerodynamic for us. Yeah, for sure. We see here uh, the virtual mock-up, uh, virtual uh, twin of uh, your drone. Uh, it's uh, one of um, different versions that, ha that you have, of course. We see uh, here uh, the simulation of the aerodynamism. Uh, it's something very complex. How big is it? This yeah, so, okay. so the Solar X1 is five meters, basically, so five meters. The good thing also is that we made it also to be easily transportable because that's a key thing. So we, the idea was mm. to, to take it as a small drone and to go abroad to any missions, fly a complete day, cover thousands of hectares. So, and uh, everything is basically um, condensed in 25 kilos. So okay. it's full composite. And uh, the idea is that we push so much on every part of the, the different subsystem to, to make it uh, highly reliable, but also highly performant. This drone is not only a drone, it's uh, also services. And you address different domains, different industries. What type of industries? So yeah, with Solar X1, which is the first brick of uh, what Exxon wants to achieve, basically, we cover what is usually covered by aerial survey, helicopters or airplanes. Uh, so it's an existing market. But for these big companies, that would be a game changer to not buy any more helicopters or aircraft, but to buy these long endurance drones, which has also a key advantage of flying below the clouds. So you don't have the weather constraints that you will have mm. when you do your calculations of a business model over a year. We fly more often. OK, um, interesting. So um, Benjamin is part of the 3D Experience Lab program for now more than four years. So it's one of the beginners uh, at the, the 3D Experience Lab. What are for you the key benefits to join this program compared to others? Yes, so compared to others, and um, yes, I think it's a, it's a very 
uh, good because uh, we've been also uh, we had the chance to uh, join o other big companies or corporates and incubators and things like that. And one of the unique advantage I think of the what Dassault has created is the um, uh, that it covers uh, everything. So from networking, covering huge events all over the world before COVID, huh? <laughs> and um, also. Um, <laughs> It's, uh, it gives, uh, yeah, so it gives everything from technical to networking to communications, marketing also. So very unique, very good. And for me, it's uh, also something quite uh, good because the so system was born with the aviation. And so if this is like a new type of aviation with a green, sustainable, and highly uh, modern, I, I think it's, uh, I'm very, very proud to, 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 yeah, to work with the so, the so, the so system on that. And coming back to the questions that I didn't answer a few minutes ago, we cover civilians and security markets. Okay, thank you. And I think uh, you have many other applications that will come in the future. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So uh, Solaris One, uh, SolarX One is uh, now commercialized uh, for uh, more than one year. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and uh, do you think that the climate crisis and uh, the COVID-19 uh, was for you an issue in your development or was it? Uh, I mean, five years ago when I created Exxon, uh, I had the deep uh, idea that uh, it's possible to design uh, only sustainable, sustainable uh, systems. So that's one of the core things of Exxon. And so, uh, now it's becoming a high priority for everybody, more and more, and this is good. I think it's good for the planet, it's good for everybody. I think we, we should, um, everybody should push on that, so it's great. Of course, from business point of view, COVID was uh, difficult, but nevertheless, we've managed to employ people, grow, and now we are 25 people, and we've opened also X in Germany and uh, in Australia, in, Br in Brisbane. Congratulations. Thank you, Benjamin. <laughs> Thank you, Jardin. Thank you. <laughs> So um, after, don't, after two projects relative to cities and to the nature with the ocean, now I propose to um, welcome on stage another startup in another domain on health tech. So as you can see, we are in a very large scale project. And uh, this startup uh, is Pika Vitality. So I welcome on stage Min Lee, general manager of Pika Vitality. Hi, Min. Hi. How are you? Hi. Sorry. <laughs> How are you? Fine. Thank you. So, uh, good health and well-being is one of the key targets for everyone at all stages. And uh, it's also a big challenge for everyone. So, this goal has been defined by the United Nations goal as essential for the humanity and for sustainable development. Improving the health of millions of people is your mission as PK Vitality. So can you please share what are you doing exactly? Before exactly telling what we are doing, uh, let's uh, put one of our mission. Uh, one of our mission is to try to bring uh, the sex appeal, the product experience that you can find globally in consumer electronics to uh, the medtech world. Uh, usually when you do have a medtech device, you say, I have to use it. What we're trying to bring is a bit of joy, happiness, and uh, don't read the fucking user manual uh, to that world. Uh, and this is something we believe is important for many more patients to be more compliant uh, with uh, the products to come. Okay, so you are on health tech, is it correct? Um, and uh, concretely, how do you improve the life of patients and of diabetics? Is it correct? Yes. So uh, after the mission, the product, uh, what we're developing is a continuous glucose uh, monitoring device. So there are some which are existing. Usually it's in the form of a patch on the upper arm or on the belly. But what we bring is radically different in terms of form factor and then user experience. We are bringing it in the form of a smartwatch here, 
and a patch, so it's, it's a bit tiny, but on the screen that would be probably better, a patch that sits just behind the watch and which is invisible. So for the diabetes patient, in fact, the uh, patient experience is I put my uh, patch on a Sunday, I keep it for one week, and then for the rest of the week, I just have to do that, check out my watch, be informed of my glucose level, and that's it. And even if I forget to do it, I will get a little reminder through a, smart vi a small vibration at the wrist to say, hey, you might be in hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. And the thing is, what people will see at the wrist is a watch, not the patch which is invisible. So it's working. Huh? There's a screen here. here. So that, that's pretty new. And uh, so it's also very important for diabetes patients not to be labeled as diabetes patients. They don't want to show the disease to others. They want to do it discreetly, check it discreetly, and take their medication whenever they want. So it's really inclusive. Yes, it's very important, especially for type 2 diabetes patients. So, the type two diabetes pa so there are two types of diabetes patients, the mm -hmm. type 1, mm -hmm. uh, which you are usually uh, get when you're young. Uh, and these people are very compliant because they are diabetic for quite a lot of time. When diabetes patients type 2, uh, the uh, disease of the 21st century that will be still there mm -hmm. after COVID will have passed. Uh, unfortunately, too many uh, people, 460 million diabetes patients uh, in 2020, 700 million uh, are mm -hmm. the figures for 2040. And those diabetes patients, the type 2, uh, that are pay diabetes because of not good food, not enough activity, they are not very compliant, uh, usually refuse to, to uh, use uh, medical devices. And we believe that with such a product, which is let's say, a consumer electronic product, but medical grade, uh, will lead them to uh, better observe what their diabetologist would say and better take care of uh, themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it's better health uh, for them, less cost for the society. Perfect. Um, and um, so Peak Vitality is, uh, has joined the 3D Experience Lab uh, for two years. And uh, how the lab, the Street Experience Lab, helps you in your daily work? So it started to help us uh, in a very big way on the mechanical side. Uh, the mechanical team couldn't have done uh, what we've achieved. And it could seem to be pretty simple, but there are something like 36 patterns between the watch and the patch. Most two-thirds of them are mechanical. Uh, without uh, the uh, help of the uh, DASO system and the, uh, 3D, uh, uh, the 3D experience uh, platform. It came uh, free uh, at the beginning as part of the acceleration program of uh, the 3D experience lab. And honestly, it really saved uh, our ass, right, uh, when COVID came because uh, we were in the middle of the development uh, from uh, Friday to Monday, we had to pack everything and work from home. And uh, with that uh, tool, uh, we could uh, resume work on Monday as if we were all at the office when everybody was at home. And today, it's a bit more different. It's also a collaboration uh, with our partners, whether they're in China or US, etc. And uh, this collaboration is a lot easier uh, with such a tool. It's definitely the best tool in, uh, in simulation. Uh, okay. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that, it's a mechanical team. I'm not super good in Katia, to, to be uh, very honest, but uh, I've, seen, uh, I've seen people working and they're smiling working on it. Uh, and also, it's not just a mechanical team, it's also globally f uh, on, on the uh, acceleration program, the support of, uh, of, of the uh, 3DS lab. So uh, when we had issues, not only mechanical, uh, we could have access to mentors uh, and there are plenty of very talented people uh, at Dassault who uh, could help us. We don't have all those talents uh, in our company, even we, if we are 40 now. Uh, and also uh, visibility uh, and your support. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Uh, so that's important when you're a startup to, uh, to be visible. Thank you. 
Uh, last questions. Um, you, as manager, as a general manager of PK Vitality, your journey, I think it's a balance between hiring, hiring pe people but also rising funding. So I think uh, you are uh, very busy. Uh, I, I'm very busy. I, you were a bit uh, stressed because I came just five minutes going uh, before uh, joining on stage uh, because we are just uh, closing a, a Series A. So you don't have to sleep too much, right? So that's not super good. Uh, sleep, uh, sleep in the weekend uh, during the week, it's a bit more difficult. Uh, it's, uh, what is important is uh, really to uh, uh, the management of uh, priorities. Uh, so there will be some months or quarters where you will do mainly funding, other where you will do uh, product development, hiring the people, uh, scaling up, and after it just uh, balancing what is important and uh, focusing on the right thing. Thank you very much, Min. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Min um, is working on, uh, on this product uh, for now a uh, few, uh, few years. And this product is uh, on clinical, clinical trial. So uh, in I hope next year, maybe, uh, we can have your project uh, on the shelves? Yeah, so not on the shelf because there are still some, uh, you know, there are a few trials and after you have to apply for CMARC, but uh, it's planned for end of 2023. Maybe next year on stage I will be able to show you not just a demo, but uh, to come and see how, how it uh, measures glucose effectively. Thank you. So now the last startup. So uh, that we have selected today, and because we have uh, many others, and we have around 50 uh, startups uh, who have uh, joined the 3D Experience Lab, um, is a startup on another domain, completely different. So we are on the consumer good um, domain, and uh, this startup is on a B2C uh, market. And I welcome on stage Pauline Evno, the founder and CEO of Sayos. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Geraldine. How are you? I'm fine, and you? <laughs> Good, thank <laughs> you. Music has been always for you a passion. Yes. Uh, and you are an engineer and a doctor in acoustic. So uh, what has sparked this passion of music? Yeah, so as you told, I've always been passionate about music. I was listening to music every day when I was young and still now. And uh, I started playing flute at the age of five, so really early. And then I was also really good at science. I really like science. So after uh, my uh, baccalaureate, I went to uh, class prepa. So and uh, I discovered the acoustics. And when I discovered that, it was really like the love at first sight. Mm -hmm. It was the music and the science just uh, together. So I was, uh, yeah, really, really interested into that. So then after my engineering school, I decided to do a PhD in uh, musical acoustics at IRCAM in Paris. And then I went to do a postdoc also on musical acoustics in, uh, at McGill University in, uh, in Montreal. Wow, really impressive. <laughs> So, um, but the code of music industry is quite classic in France. Uh, it's, a, it's a real, we can say, issue. Uh, and your project is really disruptive. We are talking about a mouse species. And a mouse species is that. <laughs> so, uh, when we say disruptive, and how usually is it's it? not orange, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we can talk about that. <laughs> Uh, but how is it disruptive? Because it's just a plastic. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so the, the musical industry is a really old aging uh, industry. And uh, I realized when, uh, when I started the company, I, I realized that nobody was really uh, innovating in this world. So uh, uh, that's what my main, um, the, the main thing that, um, giving me the envy to, to, to start the company because I, I had so many, um, so many results from my research and I wanted to bring that to the world. So I decided to start Sios. So 
yeah, just a few words at Sayos, what we do is really to give the musician, uh, so for the moment it's for saxophone and clarinet, so we give them the, the sound of their dream, uh, and what we do is uh, to really understand their needs, how they will describe the, the sound they want, and we uh, an analyze that and we translate those words into a geometry of a mouse piece, oh, you can see here. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, it's a lot of um, research in acoustics and uh, psychoacoustics, and uh, then we can really understand uh, what the influence of the geometry and shape First the good uh, the good geometry for each musician. Perfect. So here we see yeah. uh, the uh, sort of uh, part of uh, your mouse pieces and we see the different flow with a simulation. Yeah, so what you need to know is first, that uh, with first... the results of our in online questionnaire, we create a 3D model of the mouse uh, piece there is on <laughs> Yeah, so I think it's the voice of Maxim, so that's <laughs> my co-founder, but we don't see Yes, it. in this experience, <laughs> with could, uh, you can see, we have also the, s the sound, but we have cut it <laughs> just <laughs> okay, now so <laughs> for, the, for, the, uh, for the interview, but... Uh uh, yeah, so, so yeah, what we need to know is that um, the material doesn't have any impact on the sound. What's really important is the, the shape of uh, the inside of the geometry. So it's only a few millimeters, but the musician can really feel the difference. So you can uh, really uh, have a complete different sound uh, by changing a few parameters, and that's what we understand, and we are the only one uh, in the world to, to be able to do that. So if I play jazz or if I play rock, I need different mouse pieces? Yes, exactly. So if you want like a dark sound, we will work on, on parameters. So uh, I can give some details, but uh, yeah. So you, for example, you have like a large chamber and a, a baffle that will be kind of low. And if you want to gi give more power, play rock music, then you will need to, to have like a, a really sharp baffle, a, s a small chamber and so on. So on. Okay. Uh, it has been uh, now four years. You have uh, part of the 3D Experience Lab program. No, we are old. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> you are so young. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, how the lab uh, has helped you? Uh, so, yeah, at the beginning, we really worked together to, to be able to fully automatize all the, the process from uh, getting the musician needs to uh, directly shape a geometry. Uh, so that was a really good help. We work with a lot of mentors to really uh, make the most of the CAD softwares. And, um, and also, yeah, I would like to say that uh, it's nice to, to get an uh, invitation for events like that. So we, we actually went together to the CES, and I think it was in 2018. And yeah. that was a, a great experience. So yeah, I'm really happy to, to be here. Thank you. So your 3D print, all mouse pieces, is it correct? Yes. Okay, so you have a, a big uh, manufacturing... Uh yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so we actually got a, a really good grant from the Ile-de-France re region uh, last year, so we could really open a, a big factory in the north of Paris. Actually, it's uh, pretty mm -hmm. close to here. And... Uh, and yeah, then we have uh, like 60 3D printers there, and um, and yeah, now we are working on the automatization of the 3D printing process because right now, so we are we we are able to to design the mouse piece, but then we still need to uh, to do. Yeah, there are s there several steps like w what we call slicing and stuff to to do uh, in the 3D to put in the 3D printer, so we are working on that to, to be able to, to print more, um, more mouse pieces and to be more efficient. So right now we are uh, selling more, uh, 500, more than 500 mouse pieces every month. Wow. Uh, we export like 80% of the mouse pieces and uh, yeah, we hope to double next year. Wow. Who is playing with this type of mouse pieces in the world? Uh, we are working with a lot of uh, great musicians. So, for example, we work with uh, Scott Page, who was former musician from Pink Floyd. We work with uh, Steve Cortica, who is the player of uh, Lady Gaga. Uh, Tivan Pennicott, who plays with uh, Gregory Porter. Uh, 
a lot more, like wow. a lot in people in jazz and uh, modern music. Wow. So you, if you are playing music and if you want to buy for Christmas a mouse pieces, how yeah. can we buy it? Yeah, actually, we have a special offer for Christmas. So if you <laughs> buy a mouse piece, you get a special <laughs> gift. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so you can uh, yeah you can go online on our website. So it's uh, sios.co and uh, you can uh, buy a mouse piece for you, or you can you know, buy a gift card and uh, give it to uh, a saxophone or clarinet player that you love, and uh, he will be happy. So David, can you play music? Thank you. <laughs> That was a great show. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pauline, for this um, great project and uh, long life. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Right. So thank you. Uh, as you have uh, seen, we have a lot of different projects. All these projects uh, at the lab are really inclusive. So we work uh, with all these entrepreneurs to, uh, to change the world with a positive impact. That's our mission. So it's really, really important to change the world and to act locally. Hmm? <laughs> Think globally, but act locally. So maybe, Frédéric, do you have a few words? I am back, so I'm very impressed by uh, those young entrepreneurs. <laughs> Uh, as, as you have seen, many projects, uh, actually, we have many projects in the life science, maybe 60% of our projects, but here we are willing to show the, also the diversity, and we have the exact same number of men and women, so uh, congratulations. <laughs> um, the, our objective is uh, not only to uh, accelerate those startups to success, it's the first objective, obviously, for, for, for the team, Uh, but we want to do much more on the, through those projects. We really want to inspire the entire industries uh, to say that if they can do it, uh, most of the big guys also could, uh, could change the world. Uh, flying with the sun is something that is now feasible. Uh, Benjamin is showing it. Uh, cleaning the, the plastic from the ocean. And, and now the question is uh, to scale, to do it big way. Mm -hmm. And as you said, um, we are an open community. The challenges are so huge that uh, everyone needs to work together. So you are all welcome to, uh, to contribute, to help us, to grow the community on a worldwide standpoint. Thank you. <laughs> to end the session, we have an inspiration video that you will show you all other projects for two minutes. Thank you.
as you understood, we are building the, the 3D experience universe for a, for a sustainable innovation and for a better world. Uh, this is what we do at Dassault System as a, our contribution to a, a huge metaverse. And thank you uh, for all for your attention. And don't forget, together we are stronger. <laughs> That's true. And thank you for our startups, Katarina, Benjamin, Mine, and uh, Pauline. Some of them came from, uh, from uh, far away. <laughs> uh, thank you for our eyes, uh, David, now our VR expert. And I guess you understood the value of the experience, not only for engineering, but also for, uh, for sharing, for experiencing. Thank you, everyone, for being there. And uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.